Let's let's talk a little bit about Dune. All right. So uh, we got the uh, Dune RPG from Mophidius. Modifius. Modifius. Thank you. Right? I'm I'm never gonna <laughs> say that right. Uh, but it but uh, yeah, it's a fantastic book. Um, I so I we we were actually talking in the green room before this where I think that I no longer like running fantasy RPGs. I think I like running science fan or you know uh, science fantasy. Uh, okay. So you know Star Wars falls in there, Dune falls in there, and there is so much in this book that I just love. Um, yeah. You, you, if you look at the table contents here, that's up right now. Uh, you can you know there's 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 just so much lore uh, about the Dune Dune uh, setting and. You go through and it breaks it down by even uh, like eras. So you have like information about the different eras and then which books uh, <laughs> to read so that you know about those eras. Um, you know, and, and then last week we did the the Fallout book. Uh, we looked at right. the Fallout book and then comparing these side to side, um, you know, this book where Fallout, it felt really fun. It felt really appropriate for the setting. This does too. Uh, this feels very yes. premium. Very, you know, everything they've done it kind of leans into like the political intrigue side of things, while not taking away a, 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 a from the harsh survival that is that is Dune, and it's all in the uh, D twenty system, mm -hmm. which is really cool. I love how this gets started, right? Because a lot of a lot of games give you variants, right? The world has all these different factions. And that's when I think about Dune, that's it. Like all the different houses vying mm -hmm. for control. Um, this one immediately at the start, it says, hold off on building your characters. You're all going to be from the same house. Like, let's let's focus on that. Let's build yeah. let's build a house together that you're all going to be part of. Decide how powerful it's going to be, whether you are in ascendance or not, and then build your characters within that framework. And it just it just reminds me of the the approach that I would always take when when I was running birthright games. Uh, which which realm are you going to be controlling? And once you're there, let's let's talk about that and then get our characters invested. So already it shows me that like yeah, politics are going to matter. Your mm -hmm. relationships to the other houses will be as important as your characters' relationships to other characters. Yeah, and it, it, it has Freeman in here as well. As mm -hmm. as in in Freeman, are of course not part of any of the houses, and those are the 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 folks from the planet Arrakis, which is Dune, right. and. <laughs> Yeah, it's Doontown. Just, it's Doontown. <laughs> and uh you, you you do have the option to play those, but you can only like you can only play them if you're in certain eras and only with the DM permission and you have to figure out how they fit within the system. And it's 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 a ton of fun. I've I've really dug going through this book. Um yeah. whereas we said, you know, the Fallout one, it spent a lot of time on the um on the equipment, on the gear on that type of stuff this one is just so so deep on like the planets the houses the mm -hmm. different uh factions even within the houses you know the jesuit sisters you know sisterhood going through a lot of that stuff too yeah. uh it's uh it's just it's it's so cool and um you and you'll see them up here uh next to me kind of flashing like i some of the uh oh man i i i love a book with really good art in really good layout and yeah. currently we're seeing uh you know kind of the chapter layout and i think that's just beautiful you know we have the chapter a little bit about what's going on this beautiful image in this great like setting i i also <laughs> i i will also prattle on about like box layouts if the boxes are laid mm -hmm. out very well so this is definitely a thing for me um yeah it's it's just it's wild i love it yeah it's really good i i'm really happy because when you know uh whenever I see a, a system come out and then being very quickly to like license different IPs for that system, I always wonder, you know, how close are they going to be to each other? You know, if I play two different versions, will it feel different? Or will I just feel like I have a core instinctive understanding of what's going on and be able to use that, right? Um, and, uh, and this is fantastic. Like both of these coming from Modifius, they really, really, like you said, they feel different. They're going to play differently. Mm -hmm. And I... I'm just excited about that. Like looking over this adventure that they have in here, of course, um, uh, it is not at all <laughs> a fallout adventure. And it's really cool that the system is broad enough to incorporate both of those. 
Yeah, I yeah, it, uh, yeah. Let's talk about the D twenty or two D twenty system real quick for folks that weren't here last time. Sure. So the way the two D twenty system it works is your well in this in this case in in Fallout you had three dice you had two D twenties and a D six. In this one you just have the two D twenties. They don't they don't have the the, the special die. So uh, what you have is you have an attribute and a skill, and your storyteller will tell you to roll. Uh, you need to roll X, Y, or Z, and you then you say, okay, well, this is my, you know, intelligence, and this is my uh, my podcasting skill. So uh, I have to roll under that skill <laughs> and get a certain amount of successes, and you know, I and I tend to fail to do that. But it, it's it's <laughs> it's 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 not, you know, so so it's kind of it's an interesting system, and I I, I as a person who's who's played a lot of Shadowrun, a lot of World of Darkness, I I love different styles of rolling instead of uh -huh. trying to get high like i like the fact that we're trying to get low on these 2d20 and you get right. that one and that's when something awesome happens uh you get that 20 and that's when something not so awesome happens absolutely so. oh my gosh when you said podcasting i thought you meant pod racing because i'm thinking about a desert world and it just got real bad in my head real quick um <laughs> it's like that's not that's not dune dune pod racers of dune it's not a now, book <laughs> now, now that's what i call pod racing <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a section in here that I really like, which is about the nature of conflict. Um, oh, and it yeah. talks about how there are, whenever you're looking at a conflict, and that can be a, a duel, it can be a, an espionage task, a skirmish, um, could just be war, right? It could be huge. Um, that they all have similarities and kind of the rules are going to, to put those together. Like talk about the scope of what that conflict might look like, consider what your assets are in these conflicts, you know, talk about the zones of the conflict that they take over. Um, and, uh, and that's going, going to allow you to think really carefully about what your actions are like and how the entire thing works. I just, I really, really appreciate that it's got that kind of breadth to it, you know, um, that it's all kind of part of the same thing. As long as there's opposition, which mm -hmm. social, social engagement has opposition to it. So shouldn't those rules reflect what a combat is going to be like anyways? And they're just kind of digging in and saying, uh, yeah, yeah, it's just actions. You just have moves. Just take your moves. And I mm -hmm. love that style of gameplay that we see here. Yeah, I... It, it... Uh, you know, and, and we keep touching on this and I just, I just can't, you know, talk about this enough is, 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 is the way you start building your character. I, I just love that so much. It's like, no, no, build your house, figure mm -hmm. your house out. And then once you figure, once you get your house in order, then you can start filling it with people and you're one of those people. And, you know, they, it, it, it gives, it gives the DM or the, the storyteller this cool opportunity to, include politics in a fun way uh not yeah. just uh, in multiple ways it, but but in fun ways to to your characters right because you not only will you have house politics but then you'll have intra house politics and right. then you know galactic or whatever politics like uh, it's it's just it's it's wild um you know it, it and, and when you kind of when you're kind of doing this you can pick like house hartonian right and uh there is a big long like it's not just one page; it's multiple pages talking about each of these houses. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's it's so good, uh, and uh, you know, it, it, I just I just don't know what to say about. It. I'm actually like it's great. You were really excited about the Fallout one, and I have as I've kind of dug into this more, <laughs> I'm more excited about this than I was about the Fallout one. Now, it's gonna definitely be a different style of story, but uh, yeah. Yeah, Fallout, I've got like some cool one shots in mind. This one, oh my, I, you know, the house section, I was just looking through it. And again, like looking at like, there's all the roles for the house. I mean, here's an envoy. Here's exactly what their rights and responsibilities are. Like an envoy needs to have a keen grasp on the state of the universe outside the confines of their house, right? Uh, the the heirs, the chief physicians, right? Which, which mm -hmm. people can they talk to easily? Um, and I just love that that's all in here because it just reminds me of, of some of my favorite political games. Yeah, and and you and you, I mean, you said you've oh. you've run a lot of birthright. Could you take some of that? You know, like could you take some of that birthright information and go? All right, well, here we go. This is this is now what we're doing. Uh, so we we ha now have House Harkonian against this new house that you just made up with your PCs, and they're going right. up against each other, right? You know, that's that's definitely the kind of thing you can you can bring into this. Uh, yeah, because yeah. 
because there is a sense of your houses can get more important and get more prestige as time passes and that's mm -hmm. that's i mean not exactly what what that game was about but, uh, but not far off and again i do love that it's not you know birthright is here's D D. also we need a mass battle set of rules and we need like realm magic and they added these extra systems to the side of D D. and i love that this is just like it's basically all the same thing you know <laughs> If you want to smack someone, that's the same thing as I'm going to send my battalion forward to attack, you know, the other battalion. It's just a big smack. <laughs> it's just, it's, all, it's, it's, it's all smacking. Roll a die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. It, uh, I, so cool. I, I, I'm looking forward to reading through this book and learning more about the Dune setting because mm -hmm. the folks who put this together have just done so much research and they have so much information in here. Like it goes into the, the ways in that, uh, the culture of the different houses is even yeah. like, you know, if you're, if you're with this house, it's going to be, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be expected to act this way. And these are, right. you know, the, the things that you may, may, uh, may kind of get, uh, get wrapped up in. Absolutely. Oh gosh. Okay. Okay. Well, it's so good. I'm just too excited now. Yeah. You've turned me around on this one. Because <laughs> um, you know, I, I I'm sure that I read I read Dune probably the same time I read Foundation when it was just a like I, I don't know uh, let's just read like the the big ones I haven't read those before um, and so I kind of went through and did like a, a sci-fi Legends of Sci-Fi sort of deal um, mm -hmm. but it was a long time ago so I don't actually remember the world but like starting to see this and the way that they've they've made it clear that I don't need to know everything about like House Harkonnen or whatever. Um, I mean, it's going to tell me enough, and my own house is going to be a cool, unique thing that I'm going to build together with my party. So, uh, like, that gives me a lot of comfort that I'm going to be able to jump into this and and know what's going on. Which yeah. is also a thing I like about these kind of settings. <laughs> yeah, and 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 they they also do a good job of uh, talking to you about when you're creating NPCs as as the game master. And this is this is mm -hmm. one of the 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 cool portions of this book, and I think this could be used in other D and D campaigns, other systems it's you know creating non-player characters so what what they're talking about is the first section is all about make them believable so you know yeah. uh ready Re so what is their position is the first question you kind of ask yourself second question you ask yourself what is their name and what is their pronouns right so you know and then where do they live and then where have they lived all their lives uh you know it does this character value power and and so as you uh -huh. kind of go through these things and that's just make them believable and then they have a section that just says manage diversity and this talks about it says the world of dune is vast and large filled with unique characters that have different needs embrace that diversity and make it apparent in your game with re relying on two dimensional tropes and i think that's a, a very important that's a very important chunk of text right there and yeah. i think everyone should kind of think about that right um <laughs> whenever they're 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 doing these things mm -hmm. uh, i agree and, and and they say some things keep in mind replicating accents that are not your own might dampen the mood of the game um so instead just try changing the pitch of your voice or the speed at which you talk that type of stuff um yeah. It, it, it you you can use uh, different languages, but make sure that they're not mockeries of languages that you might know in real life. Uh, sexuality and romance can look different be between characters. Who are they attracted to, if anyone? Do they have one partner, multiple partners, no partners? It you know it, it goes into all these really cool things. It says include different or people of different color, right? You know it goes through all these cool things to remember as as you're 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 painting the tapestry that is your your setting that is your your game when you're around the table to make sure and and think about these things as you're creating um as as you're creating these npcs yeah i like that a lot because it's not just a small reminder at the start of the the game you know it doesn't no. just say like remember let's let's be let's be um let's be be open and respectful and do these things it's no they're putting it in here as you're running this game it's your job like develop the tapestry you know yeah and i i really i appreciate that in the book <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah you know and the, I, I like this warning too that that i i feel like some some dms really need to remember um is don't let the npcs take over the adventure 
Yeah. That's not it's not your NPC stories. You introduce them to 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 have problems that the players have solutions for. Mm-hmm. Uh you introduce them to act as guides, as messengers. Um uh, yeah. occasionally you can have them to be, you know, almost like the hand of God coming in, saving the day. But so long as it moves the story along for the players, right? Yeah. Because that's that's going to be a downside to any of these stories that are set in a, a campaign world with pre-existing NPCs, right? Of course, you want to play with the people from the books, right? So you, that's why you pick that era. You know, that's kind of a fun thing. But yeah, they can't be the stars of the show, even though they're the stars of the books. <laughs> right? Yeah, you're 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 not going to be playing, uh, you know, uh, the Jesuit Reverend Mother from the books. Yeah, uh, you're 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 hopefully going to see a different one, and right. uh, you know, the sisterhood will prevail. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Wait, is that how that goes? I thought Baron Harkonnen prevailed. I thought that was the way it went. Um, mm. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Um, very cool. Well, I'm excited about that. That does look really good. I'm glad. I mean, Dune's got that's had such a huge resurgence. I mean, we got the movie coming out. We got the the board game that came out last year, the year before, mm-hmm. uh, which I took a look at, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for make for movie. a fun couple of game nights. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for the new Dune movie. I'm I like a lot, a lot. <laughs> Good.